Professor David Stuckler here. Hey, one of the biggest complaints I get from students is that they feel slow. It's like, prof, I just need to go faster. I'm not as fast as other people. Everybody's getting ahead of me. I'm not making my deadlines. It's stressing me out. I'm just losing steam. What do I do? When students say this to me, I'm like, okay, let's well, step back and take a breath. I first want you to map out the reasons why you're slow so that we can take a scientific approach to it and diagnose what, what's really behind this, what's the source of it. And only when we get that position, it's like diagnosing the right symptoms and signs can we then begin to work on it. I actually want to challenge you here because there are at least five reasons, five good reasons you might feel slow. So I want you to think about these before really beating yourself up. The first one of these is kind of probably obvious and clear, but you're doing it for the first time. Probably you remember riding a bike for the first time. You probably fell down a few times. Might have even needed training wheels before you got up and going. And now you can do it in your sleep. Research is like that. You're learning new methods, techniques, ways of working, thinking. Yeah, it, it, it's not easy to do for the first time. And it's going to take you five, six times as long as what you'll be able to do in the future. Second, it's unpredictable. Things happen in science, especially when it's new, that you don't know. You know that you don't know things are gonna come across. And what can happen is when you have those unpredictable things, you don't feel a sense of control, a sense of control over your destiny. And this can lead you to feeling a bit deflated, like you don't have wind in your sails, feeling a bit flat, that you don't have control over the agenda. Again, with experience, with time, you'll be better able to know those unknowns and you will be able to predict the unpredictability. But again, remember, actually being slow and feeling slow are two different things. Third, it's non-linear. So normally, right, imagine if you're working on a factory, imagine you're on a factory line, you're just dumping granola into a box. Well, I can kind of adjust a control knob. I'm dumping more granola into the box fast. I'm getting more boxes full of granola. And there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the work I'm putting in and the result and output I'm getting out. But research isn't like that. It's very non-linear. So there are times maybe when you can write and you're like, wow, I flew through 3,000 words. Other times you write and you're banging your head against the wall. Same thing with lab, with an experiment. It's kind of a punctuated and kind of gradual steps of improvements. And some of those steps are big steps. Some of them are small steps. So instead of calibrating yourself by the result, I recommend you calibrate the things you have actual control over, which is your time in, and then decide if you're truly feeling slow. Uh, again, if you're judging your output based on a concrete result, sometimes, especially if that process is non-linear, right, there just isn't that one-to-one. -one. You're just going to have messed up calibration for whether you're fast or actually slow. Third thing is uh, support structure. I mean, there are some labs and some groups that just function so well that everybody goes faster. The best teams I've seen, right, that have maybe are, are structured like a chain of command on a boat where you have, right, the captain, maybe the professor, and then the postdocs. Uh, professor helps the postdocs, postdocs help the PhDs, PhDs help the master's students. And they really thrive through that system of mutual support. Other boats, it's like people are in deck, but they're, they're, they're speaking different languages and nothing's getting done. And you can just see, if you're on a boat that runs like a, a well-oiled machine, you're gonna be a lot faster because you got the support in place. Whereas the other boat, well, don't get on that boat. But again, I think sometimes people slip into this mentality of like, oh, I'm just gonna paddle as fast as I can, but they don't realize, well, okay, you're paddling great, but one is a speedboat and one is just a rowboat, it's, right? So that we, we, as individuals, look for individual explanations for things, and we don't often see the environmental explanation for things for reasons that are often way beyond our control. Finally, and this is a big one. This is a big one, especially, I'll say, with millennials and, and younger generations, social comparisons. So some studies have been done that looked at people's engagement with social media like Facebook to ask a question, hey, is Facebook making you miserable? Is Instagram making you miserable? What they found is for people who were over the age of 40, just no, no real effect on happiness. But for people who are younger, it was actually making them miserable. So uh, side note, guys, turn off social media. It's, it's not helping you. But there was a caveat. It depends on how you use it. And so the people who were making social comparisons on social media were feeling worse about themselves and it was making them miserable. Where the others uh, had a more of an internal inner compass and just didn't care. So that's my recommendation to you. Have your own internal compass, right? This Your speed doesn't necessarily need to be somebody else's speed. Okay, of course, there are some standard deadlines you need to respect, but set your own internal compass and stop making comparisons. Remember, if you're doing something for the first time, you can't compare yourself doing a project for the first time with somebody who's maybe more experienced on your team or in the lab or in, in another group who maybe is flying and you think, wow, they're just so good and great. I feel like a fraud. I'm suffering imposter syndrome now. No, there, there can be, as I've just talked about, lots of different reasons that have 
nothing to do with your ability. Remember, you're where you are because you were selected to be there and you are perfectly capable of thriving if you have the right support and guidance to do so. If you feel like you don't have that support and guidance and you do feel like you're slow for some of these reasons that are maybe maybe not these and maybe not so good or you just want to you're feeling good and you just want to improve and go faster, come check out my Facebook group. We can directly be in touch and we can see if you could be a good fit for some of our more advanced support that really helps researchers fly.